Hey guys, it's Lizzie. Today I'm going to talk about why Mary is queen of heaven. I would argue that this is one of the most biblically based theologies of anything in Christianity. In the Jewish monarchy, so throughout the Old Testament, the mother of the king was the queen, not the wife of the king. So at the moment when the angel Gabriel is announcing to Mary in Luke 1 that she will bear a son and name him Jesus, that the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, that he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. When Mary is hearing this from the angel, that her son will take the throne of David, that her baby Jesus will be a king forever, she is also hearing that she will be a queen. As a Jew living in the first century, hearing from the angel verbatim referencing David's kingship, obviously to her, it means that she will be queen mother of this kingdom of heaven. There are dozens and dozens of Bible verses proving this queen mother concept from the Old Testament. And then there are also dozens of New Testament Bible verses proving that Jesus is establishing a kingdom, that his ministry on earth is fulfilling all of these Old Testament prophecies, talking about the future Messiah reigning as the heir on David's throne. I think a lot of times with interpreting the Bible, we want it to immediately make sense to our 21st century postmodern perspective. But that's crazy. All of this happened 2,000 years ago in a vastly different culture. And so we really have to get into the mind of how first century Jews would have understood Jesus and his kingdom and would have understood all of these Bible verses. this shirt. It's showing the coronation of Mary in heaven. And you might think that's something that Catholics made up. But I want us to start by looking at Revelation 12. Right here it references a Bible verse, a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And then going down to verse 13, when the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness. And this is going to be important later, but verse 17 refers to Christians as her offspring. I don't want to say all Protestants, but probably a majority of Protestants will look at this verse and say that it's obviously talking about Mary. And so in verse 1, Mary is clothed with the sun, the moon is under her feet, and she has a crown of 12 stars. So Catholics take this passage and have since the early church to be talking about Mary as the queen. Mary crowned as the queen once she gets to heaven. So let's get into these Old Testament passages about the queen mother concept. Jeremiah 29 2. This was after King Jeconiah and the queen mother, the court officials, the princes, craftsmen, and the smiths, 2 Kings 10 13. King Jehu met relatives of King Ahaziah of Judah. We have come down to visit the royal princesses and the sons of the queen mother. Jeremiah 13, 18. Say to the king and the queen mother, take a lowly seat for your beautiful crown has come down from your head. So this passage in Jeremiah is just referencing how the queen mother had a crown. So a huge reason why the wife wasn't the queen is because most of the kings had more than one wife. So David and one of his wives Bathsheba 
give birth to Solomon. And then Solomon succeeds David as king. And so we can see in 1 Kings 2 that Bathsheba's role as queen mother was actually to bring the people's request to the king. 1 Kings 2.19 So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him on behalf of Adonijah. The king rose to meet her and bowed down to her. Then he sat on his throne and had a throne brought for the king's mother and she sat on his right. 1 Kings 2.20 King Solomon said to her, Make your request, my mother. I will not refuse you. So thinking of all these Old Testament prophecies of how Jesus is the heir of the throne of David and then seeing here that David's son, King Solomon, he bows down to the Queen Mother Bathsheba. He gives the Queen Mother Bathsheba a throne to the right of him and he listens to her request. This is starting to make clear Mary's role in Christianity. And here is all of 1 Kings 2. Adonijah, son of Haggith, is talking to Bathsheba. He says, may I have a word with you? She said, go on. He said, you know that the kingdom was mine and that all Israel expected me to reign. And now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. Verse 17, he said, please ask King Solomon. He will not refuse you. Bathsheba said, very well. I will ask the king on your behalf. The reason Catholics call Mary queen, think of her as being crowned a queen in heaven, given a throne. Why we give so many intercessory prayers asking her to give our prayer request to Jesus. Let's move on to other queen mothers in the Old Testament. 2 Kings 24 starting in verse 8. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And it's talking about how they're being conquered, everyone's being taken away. The king's mother, his officials, the elite of the land, he took them into captivity. It's really interesting to note in this passage how the king's mother is listed directly after the king. The mother is mentioned first and the palace officials, servants, the officers of the king are mentioned after. And it's interesting because if you look at chronology in the Old Testament, like the first nine chapters of First Chronicles, all just lists of names and genealogy. Only two times do they mention the mother at all. And only 12 times in those nine chapters is someone's wife mentioned. So thousands of names of chronology. But then if you read through 1 Kings and 2 Kings, which I read through all of it for this video, anytime a king is mentioned, the queen mother is mentioned as well. Do you guys understand the contrast here? For the normal Jewish chronology, the women aren't important at all. But then every time we're talking about a king who reigned, the mother of that king is always mentioned. An example. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite king. Like my favorite name for a king. King Jehoshaphat. <laughs> 1 Kings 22, 42. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign. His mother's name was Azuba, daughter of Shili. 1 Kings 11, 26. Jerobim, son of Nebet, an Ephronite of Zerada, whose mother's name was Zerah. 1 Kings 14.21 talks about King Rehoboam. Rehoboam, Rehoboam. Now Rehoboam, son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old. Da -da -da -da. His mother's name was Nama the Ammonite. 1 Kings 15.1-3 talks about King Abijam. He reigned for three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Mecha, daughter of Abish Shalom. Side note, verse 3, he committed all the sins that his father did before him. 1 Kings 15, 9, Asa began to reign over Judah. His mother's name was Mecha, daughter of Absalom. And then there's all these other verses that literally refer to the mother of the king as the quote, queen mother. 1 Kings 15, 13. Asa also removed his mother Mecha from being queen mother. King Jeconiah 
and the queen mother the sons of the queen mother say to the king and the queen mother so now i want to talk about a lot of the bible verses in the prophets and in the new testament that blatantly show that jesus is establishing a kingdom he is king and it's based upon the line of king david rooting it in all the customs and traditions of the jewish monarchy mark 11:10 Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Zechariah 9, 9. Your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, which is a prophecy of the triumphal entry talked about in John 12, when Jesus is riding on a donkey and all the people are surrounding him, laying out palm branches, laying out their coats and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. Isaiah 9, six through seven, for a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. Here's a prayer about Mary in the early church. Saint Athanasius in 373, it becomes you to be mindful of us as you stand near him who granted you all graces. For you are the mother of God and our queen. Help us for the sake of the king, the Lord God and master who was born of you. For this reason you are called full of grace. Remember us most holy virgin and bestow on us gifts from the riches of your graces, virgin full of graces. So all of this is verbatim referring back to what the angel told Mary in Luke 1. When Catholics pray the rosary, a lot of Protestants have issues with it, but the actual words of the prayer are just Bible verses. When the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, he says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. The term hail is an old English word that just means hello, greetings. And then the other part of the Hail Mary prayer is what Elizabeth says to Mary. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. And then she refers to the baby Jesus that's growing inside Mary as God. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And I think it's really clear from all these Bible verses, from the detailed explanation of Bathsheba going to King Solomon with requests, King Solomon promising to grant her anything, King Solomon bowing down to the queen mother giving her a throne. Something really intertwined with this Mary as queen concept that was a controversy and a heresy in the early church was whether or not Mary is the mother of God. There was this guy named Nestorius in the fifth century. It's called the Nestorian controversy. And at the council of Ephesus in the fifth century, Saint Cyril of Alexandria was the one who refuted him, but all the bishops and the Pope agreed that we should should call Mary mother of God. There's this Greek word Theotokos, which means mother of God. And it's a big deal in Catholicism and Orthodox to call Mary the mother of God. And I'm discussing this because it's intertwined with the concept of Mary being queen because she's the mother of the king. Saint Cyril of Alexandria in AD 427. I have been amazed that some are utterly in doubt as to whether or not the Holy Virgin is able to be called the mother of God. For if our Lord Jesus Christ is God, how should the Holy Virgin 
who bore him not be the mother of God. Earlier than this, Peter of Alexandria, in the year AD 305, in the genuine acts of Peter, they came to the church of the most blessed mother of God and ever virgin Mary, which, as we began to say, he has constructed in the western quarter in a suburb for a cemetery of the martyrs. So in the very beginning of the fourth century, there's a church erected for Mary. And casually passing by in his letter, he refers to Mary as the mother of God and the ever virgin. And relating to this, an early Christian named Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyons, in his Against Heresies, this is one of the most original interpretations of the Bible and the beliefs of the early Christians that we could ever find. In accordance with this design, Mary the virgin is found obedient. But Eve was disobedient, for she did not obey when as yet she was a virgin. For she did not obey when she was made the cause of death, both to herself and to the entire human race. So also did Mary, being nevertheless a virgin, by yielding obedience, become the cause of salvation both to herself and the whole human race. The Apostle John, who died around the year 100, taught a man named Polycarp who taught Irenaeus. I know I've talked about the John, Polycarp, Irenaeus in so many videos. One of Jesus' apostles dies in the year 100. Irenaeus is born a few decades later, and Irenaeus is just writing out how all the Christians thought. He refers to Mary as the virgin, and is referring to Mary as the new Eve, which is how all the early Christians thought of Mary implicating here that Mary is part of our salvation. I forgot to mention this. So just as Eve is considered the mother of all humanity, Mary being the new Eve implicates that she's the mother of all Christians, the mother of the new kingdom, the new covenant. This is talked about explicitly in John 19. In John 19, Jesus gives away his mom to John to take care of because he's the only son of Mary. If you don't agree with me, I made a whole video talking about how Mary is a perpetual virgin and Jesus is their only son. This is when Jesus is being crucified, about to die. He's looking down from the cross. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby he said to her woman here is your son and to the disciple here is your mother from that time on this disciple took her into his home so the disciple he loved is referring to john but throughout john it's really clear that john is inviting the reader into the story to be him to be the disciple whom jesus loves and so when jesus on the cross is saying to john this is your mother it's not just for john it's for all of us it's for all christians mary is the queen mother of the kingdom of heaven and she's the mother to all believers. And as promised, Revelation 12 17, then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Other translations use the phrase children, so it's referring to all Christians as Mary's offspring and children, which is why the first Christians in the early church referred to Mary as the new Eve. And I think it's really significant that in Acts 1, right after Jesus ascends into heaven, the 12 apostles minus Judas, right before Pentecost, right before the church officially begins, they all join together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers where again the Greek word Adelphos means brothers and cousins. It's really dynamic that at the very start of the church Mary is there with the 12 apostles right before the Holy Spirit descends upon all of them and Pentecost happens. And then another really early Christian Justin Martyr he was born around the year 100. He also writes about Mary as being part of salvation for the world. For Eve, who was a virgin and undefiled, having conceived the word of the serpent, brought forth disobedience and death. But the Virgin Mary received faith and joy when the angel Gabriel announced the good tidings to her that the Spirit of the Lord would come upon her and the power of the highest would overshadow her. And by Mary has he been born 
to whom we have proved so many scriptures refer, and by whom God destroys both the serpent and those angels and men who are like him, but works deliverance from death to those who repent of their wickedness and believe upon him. And so in this interpretation of the Bible from someone who was born in the year 100, so someone who's going to church with people who are from the first century church, they're implying that Mary saying yes to God is a part of salvation. All I'm showing is that to the earliest Christians, Mary is an integral part of salvation. All of this going back to Revelation 12, where Mary, the mother of Jesus, is described as having a crown of 12 stars. I hope it is so obvious to you now that the Catholic theology of Mary being queen of heaven is biblically based, was part of the apostolic tradition, and is what the early Christians believed. I love you guys so much. If you want this t-shirt, I'm gonna link in the description. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.